Stress is a natural response of the body to a stressor. It is a good thing because it helps us to react to danger and prepare for it. However, too much stress can be bad for your health. Stress can lead to anxiety and depression, and even physical symptoms such as headaches. The most common cause of stress is work-related pressure. Other causes include family problems, financial worries, or the death of a loved one. It can also be caused by fear or worry about an upcoming event, such as giving a speech or taking an exam. Anxiety is different from stress because it's more intense and long-lasting than regular stress reactions. Anxiety occurs when you feel like you need to escape from an uncomfortable situation that you cannot control or change in any way. We've all heard the terms stress and anxiety used interchangeably. The issue with this is that stress and anxiety are actually different feelings. When you feel stress, it's because of a known source, you're on a tight deadline or the kids just won't listen. This stress might manifest in feelings of anger, sadness, or irritability as well. Anxiety, on the other hand, is a specific feeling of fear and slash or dread. It may not have a known trigger either. People with an anxiety disorder will oftentimes wake up feeling anxious for no apparent reason. Anxiety can also stem from chronic stress as well. Someone whose body has a consistent surge of stress hormones running through it is at a higher risk for developing generalized anxiety. So in this video, we explain how stress and anxiety affect your brain. So before going deeper into the video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for videos. So let's get started. So let's quickly overview how stress affects your memory. Stress can affect your memory in many different ways. It is important to know the different ways that stress affects your memory so you can take steps to mitigate these effects. There are two types of stress, acute and chronic. Acute stress is a short-term response to a single event, whereas chronic stress is an ongoing response to long-term life events. Acute stress will often have a stronger effect on your memory than chronic stress, but both types of stress can lead to the following memory problems. Difficulty remembering new information, losing track of time and place, forgetting details about an event or conversation, confusion with words or numbers, and difficulty concentrating. So the next problem, stress and anxiety have bad effects on your work. There is a common misconception that stress is only bad for your health. However, it can also affect your work. For example, stress can lead to poor decision-making and make you feel like you are not productive. Stress can have an impact on the way you work in many ways, such as poor decision-making, dot be feeling like you aren't productive, increased anxiety, and worrying about things you can't control and reduced mood and happiness levels. What happens in the brain when you're stressed or anxious? There are two parts of the brain that are thought to be key players in the production and processing of anxiety, the amygdala and the hippocampus. The amygdala is an almond-shaped structure deep in the brain that is believed to be a communications hub between the parts of the brain that process incoming sensory signals and the parts that interpret these signals. It can alert the rest of the brain that a threat is present and trigger a fear or anxiety response. The emotional memories stored in the central part of the amygdala may play a role in anxiety disorders involving very distinct fears, such as fears of dogs, spiders, or flying. The hippocampus is the part of the brain that encodes threatening events into memories. National Institute of Mental Health. Once the brain has encountered a threat, whether actual or perceived, it releases a surge of chemicals like cortisol and norepinephrine. These chemicals give us a natural boost in reflex time, perception, and speed. They cause our hearts to pump faster in order to get more blood and oxygen circulating through our bodies. We essentially go into survival mode. Anxiety floods your brain with stress hormones. When you feel anxious, your body goes on alert prompting your brain to prepare itself for flight or fight mode. In an attempt to help you fight off whatever has made you anxious, 
your brain floods your central nervous system with adrenaline and cortisol. These hormones tell your body that something scary is about to happen. Their role is to help you cope with danger. In order to do that, they sharpen your senses and make your reflexes faster. In a non-anxious brain, when the danger is gone, the sympathetic part of your nervous system takes over and calms you down. But when you suffer from anxiety, you may not be able to reach that sense of calm. Instead, the rush of stress hormones causes your brain to release even more stress hormones until you're simply overwhelmed. Anxiety makes your brain hyperactive to threats. Anxiety can also make your brain hyperactive to threat. Anxiety can also make your brain hyperactive to threats. When you deal with anxiety on a consistent basis, your amygdala grows larger. The amygdala is a tiny almond-shaped structure located in the limbic system, the part of your brain that deals with emotions and moods. The amygdala is like your brain's watchman, staying on the lookout for any danger or threats. When the amygdala notices potential danger, it sends signals to the hypothalamus, which triggers a fight or flight response. In the anxious brain, the amygdala is large and hypersensitive. Because of this, the amygdala sends a lot of false alarms. You can think of a hypersensitive amygdala as a watchman who cries wolf too often. An overactive amygdala sends false alarms so often that your brain senses threats even in non-threatening situations. That's why people with anxiety disorders tend to feel threatened more often than someone without such a disorder. Stress changes the brain structure. Your brain is composed of both gray matter and white matter. Gray matter is used for decision-making and problem-solving, while white matter is used to connect regions of the brain and communicate information. It has been noted that during times of chronic stress, the myelin sheets that make up white matter become overproduced, while less gray matter is produced. When this happens, there can be an imbalance in gray and white matter. In some cases, this results in permanent changes to the brain structure. Stress shrinks the brain. While the overall volume of the brain tends to remain about the same, it has been found that chronic stress in otherwise healthy individuals can cause areas of the brain associated with emotions, metabolism, and memory to shrink. Chronic stress also made people more likely to experience brain shrinkage when exposed to intense stressors. This means that people under constant stress may find it harder to deal with future stress. Stress kills brain cells. It has been suggested by researchers that chronic stress can even kill new neurons in the brain's hippocampus. The hippocampus is one of only two locations where neurons are produced. Despite the fact that the formation of new neurons does not seem to be affected, Research shows that new neurons produced during periods of stress are more likely to die within a week, more susceptible to mental illness. An imbalance between white and gray matter can also play a role in the development of mental illness. The theory is that having excess myelin in certain areas of the brain interferes with the timing and balance of communication. It was also noted that chronic stress can negatively alter hippocampal function. The hippocampus is involved in memory, specifically spatial memory, memory consolidation, and memory transfer. So that's it for today's video. I hope you like this video. If you really want to, then do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for more videos. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.